Bye, kids. Our home is the biosphere. It's fixed and finite. It can't grow. And we've got to learn to live within that finite world. The next stage after this is there are going to be pipelines blown up if our leaders don't pay attention to what's going on. As you've no doubt heard, uh, GOT Gondek and the Calgary City Council have decided that we are in a climate emergency. Beyond that, David Suzuki has taken it to the next level and suggested that if politicians don't take drastic actions, pipelines will inevitably be bombed. And worse still, the NDP, the official opposition here in Alberta, has endorsed illegal pipeline protest. It is no wonder with this climate of hysteria that people have become radicalized. People, if we don't talk to them. I would love to talk to you guys, but... Yeah, you can go f*** yourself. If you agree that there is no climate emergency, go to noclimateemergency.com, click the link so you can send an email directly to Gioti Gondek, and be sure to sign our petition. Adam Sos here for Rebel News and we are at the TC Energy offices here in Calgary where a protest is taking place. Uh, for those who don't know, TC Energy owns the Coastal Gas Link pipeline which has come under controversy with some protests. Uh, you've likely heard of them as the Wet'suwet'en protests. Now this is a bit of a contentious issue because there is some divisions. Ultimately, five out of six elected Indigenous councils have endorsed this plan in Wet'suwet'en land. So they have endorsed this pipeline. Furthermore, in the entire course of the pipeline, the planned trajectory, 20 elected nations have endorsed the pipeline project as well. Hereditary chiefs, however, are claiming that these pipelines are a violation of their territory. Uh, ultimately, the question remains as to whether those elected councils should be respected uh, or not, and whether they should go with these hereditary claims that, uh, frankly, don't quite have the same uh, tenure or democratic air to them as the elected councils. This is a $6.6 billion pipeline project that is an economic boon for these communities, often one of the largest employers in these areas as well. So that opportunity for the community when these pipelines are held up or when they are illegally blockaded by eco-terrorist style activity, uh, it can severely detriment the communities adversely. So we're going to see how the day unfolds today. We're going to follow the protest as it carries on and, and bring you updates throughout the evening. Hi. been no lack of criticism lobbied towards the United Conservative Party here in Alberta, but Minister of Environment and Parks Jason Nixon actually had a very strong motion yesterday. I had an exclusive interview with him about it, but he was calling for David Suzuki to apologize and for the NDP to recant their endorsement of illegal pipeline protests. In deep, deep doo-doo, and they've been telling us, the leading experts, for over 40 years. This is what we're come to. The next stage after this is there are going to be pipelines blown up if our leaders don't pay attention to what's going on. The next stage after this is there are going to be pipelines blown up. Talking about extinction, rebellion, and blowing up pipelines and dog whistles like this is inciting environmental terrorism. I will not stand for these kind of remarks or comments in my country or my province, Mr. Speaker, and I hope all members of the chamber agree. Uh, another interesting thing that we have noticed here today is that there are so many mainstream media outlets here. While there are probably only maybe 80 to 120 people present, when we see thousands of people protesting against vaccine passports or other things like that, uh, there is no media coverage whatsoever. So uh, an interesting observation from the event today. <laughs> protest has taken to the streets now. Traffic is being blocked. Uh, folks are honking a little bit annoyed. Uh, an interesting contrast to the freedom protests that take place on the weekend where they cooperate with police and uh, move their way through the streets uh, without causing too much hassle. Uh, obviously uh, a pre-planned sort of thing. This a little bit more impromptu and unplanned takeover of the streets in downtown Calgary.
So we are, uh, once again, as I mentioned, at the corner of 4th and 1st in Southwest Calgary here at the TC Energy Building. Uh, the group has now taken over the intersection. They're blocking traffic in all directions. Police are doing their best to get people through uh, as they can. We don't know how long this is going to continue. Uh, traffic has been stopped in a number of directions to avoid cars from intersecting with the protest here. Extremely interesting, a number of people uh, driving by and even biking by were chanting that it's time to build the pipeline, calling for this work to go ahead anyways. An interesting juxtaposition in the heart of oil country, next to all these head offices where their wealth has been made off of oil. Uh, this protest taking place and some Calgarians working in these buildings clearly opposed. We couldn't help notice that a few of the folks down here who would likely brand themselves as eco-activists uh, drove and parked their uh, gas vehicles right along beside us where we parked. We don't talk to them. They're just filming me in, just learning, not filming. Me. I don't care, we're just not talking. I would love to talk to you guys, but... No, you can go well, the protesters are now moving through various intersections in downtown Calgary, causing uh, quite a bit of chaos, vehicles being turned around. Uh, there's no real order as we see at protests normally. They're kind of going where they go, and police are, are doing their very best to accommodate and redirect traffic as the, uh, as the protest moves. <laughs> Protesting is a fundamental right for Canadians, for Albertans, but those protests typically should be respectful of infrastructure, not blocking off roadways, not blocking off public transit. That is what this protest is doing. And unfortunately, police are not intervening. It's similar to some of the protests that we have seen out at these pipelines that have been so hotly contested. These sort of problems should be resolved in court and resolved with conversations, not blocking off streets and keeping people from getting home to their families. It's pretty wild how a sentiment as simple as I encourage people to protest but they shouldn't block key infrastructure can garner hatred, middle fingers, allegations that I'm a fascist. When the anti-vaccine mandate crowd, the pro-choice crowd, comes out and they don't block infrastructure but they're outside of hospitals, mainstream media and everyone and their dog is keen to criticize them for the grave risk they're posing to society. When these groups do it, no one dares raise a finger. A glaring double standard once again. No doubt the media will refuse to say anything critical about this despite infrastructure being blocked. While on the other hand, they are eager to criticize any other protesters who dare take to the streets. The event is wrapping up. Aside from traffic being blocked at a few intersections, there were no major incidents and we are wrapping up for the evening. As always, I want to thank you all for tuning in. For Rebel News, I'm Adam Sos. Hey, if you don't agree with the people behind me and you think that there's no climate emergency, go to noclimateemergency.com. You'll be able to click a link that sends an email directly to GOT Gondek and you'll be able to sign our petition saying that enough is enough when it comes to this climate hysteria.